Lou Canard. What's up? Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. Doing really good. Feeling really good. I like to hear that. Yeah. Okay, let's dive right in because I know we don't have a ton of time. Right. The first playoff series is in LA. Not with your former team, but in the same arena, in the same city. Is it like kind of cool to be like back in a city that you spent years in? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be a, a cool experience. Um, you know, just just being in the playoffs is just incredible um, in its own way. But yeah, it'll be cool. You know, being back in some familiar land territory. Um, you know, same kind of rims and the feel of the arena, the atmosphere. You know, it's something I've you know, got, got used to when I was out there. So uh, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it. I think every city that you live in as an athlete, and you spent like a number of years in each of the three cities, Detroit, LA, and now Memphis, hopefully. Um, what makes LA special? You know, you find in your home, you find something special about the cities. Now you're going back. What is it about LA? I mean, yeah, there's, there's a few things I could kind of, you know, go off of, but, um, you know, I think, Everywhere I've been, really, but you know, LA, like the the, the people, the the fans, um, how they love basketball. You know, I get the same feeling here as well. Um, you know, they're they're loyal. They just and they just they love their team. So um, I've just been fortunate enough, you know, everywhere I've played so far to be a part of such a great fan base. And um, you know, it just it, it really helps as a player. You know, that you have support of the fans um, no matter what you go through. So. Um, that's that was definitely a positive when I was there. And the Grizzlies, I know you're talking about their fan base, but the mm -hmm. Grizzlies fan base, uh, we were just talking about it before you, you came here. We talked about it like really quick in mm -hmm. one of our post games. That Luke chant that mm -hmm. came out of nowhere, like the first game you were here. Yeah, this is definitely definitely the uh, the quickest city <laughs> and, and fan base that really started the Luke the Luke thing. So I've heard it before, but they're this was they're, like off the bat. It. They are on it here, so. <laughs> It, it's, it was pretty cool. Uh, another connection that I want to bring up really just for a quick second with the Lakers mm -hmm. is because LeBron brought it up this week, last week, was about you passing him in Ohio high school all-time scorers, of course, back in the day. As a kid from Ohio, obviously LeBron's from Akron, you are from Franklin, Ohio, mm -hmm. home of Luke Kennard. Heard there's a sign there. Yep. <laughs> How cool was that at that moment to like be shouted out by him to know that you're passing someone who was already like kind of in the same journey as you from the same state? Yeah, it, it was it was pretty cool. Um, I mean, growing up, being from Ohio, I mean, LeBron was like the guy growing mm -hmm. up when I was when I was there. Um, so I was a big big LeBron fan and Cleveland Cavaliers fan. So. Um, I played for his AAU team uh, back when I was in Ohio, cool. so um, don't want to sh show his age or anything, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was pretty much all LeBron when I was growing up. So you know, as as the years went on in high school, just once I was getting close to his like getting close to his scoring record, it was it was a pretty cool thing. Once I ended up passing him and stuff, so to hear him bring it up now, you know, it's been he still eight, thinks about yeah, that, yeah, like eight years. It was eight years ago, but. Um, it's definitely pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, shout out to, to him for doing yeah. that. Or shout out you for doing that. <laughs> and me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another person that I know it wasn't all LeBron was I was reading this article that, and tell me if I'm wrong or like what the details are here, but that you were like in high school breaking all of your dad's previous records. Yeah. What was that? So my dad, he went to the same high school I went to. Mm -hmm. um, and he was a really good basketball player as well. He didn't, didn't play in the NBA or anything, but... Um, but he was really good from what I what I've heard, and I've, I've seen some old film of his, and uh, I would have would have crushed him. But but um, but yeah, no, we when I was in high school, starting in my junior year, I broke a couple of his records, and in senior year, I broke a couple. And outside of our gym um, in the high school, there's a wall with like all the records and stuff. And I remember one day I went with our athletic director, which was my my uh, high school basketball coach. We we like took out his name and put mine in and I took home like 10 little plastic like, like little things, card yeah. things with his name on it. Took it to him at the end of the day and uh, I'm like, so sorry, here's here's all your records that I, I, I pretty much broke them all. So. What was his reaction? Uh, well, he was he was happy. You can he be was proud, but also a little salty. Uh, yeah, no, I think he was he was a little salty a little bit at first, but 
I guess it's like if you want if it was broken, I guess it was he was happy it was me. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Because it was also um, like you did a lot of training with him too, and mm -hmm. I heard some like crazy training stories. We don't need to get into that, but like it's right. kind of cool that like he's the <laughs> one who was like there with you throughout the whole thing, right? Like he was like making you dribble home beside the car. Yeah. And so, then you were the one to break the records. Right. Right. Now he he pretty much coached me all the way up until I was like seventh or eighth grade. Um, I mean taught me basically everything about basketball growing up. Mm. Um, took me to the gym all the time. He would sometimes like, like force me to go. Like sometimes I, but like looking back now, I was so thankful for it. I love, I love being in the gym, but he's like, let's just go get a few shots up right now. And I'll be like, all right, that's, that's fine. So, um, but yeah, when I was little, he, there's a court right up, right up the street from our house. And um, I had no right hand growing up. I mean, I was all, all lefty shooting and I never shot with my right hand. So he wanted to work on that a little bit. Um, and he would, I would drive, I would dribble home. It, it was not far at all. Um, <laughs> so I don't want it to be like a crazy story, but um, he would, he would drive beside me and I would be on the sidewalk dribbling with my right hand, left hand behind my back. And if I messed up, I would restart. And, um, but now it's like, I would, rather drive right than left. So it's it's pretty crazy how it worked out, but yeah. But, and I'm not like, but, part of this one article that this is all coming from said that you were like ambidextrous because mm -hmm. they were saying something about when you were a quarterback, which shout out, I saw some quarterback stats. Right. <laughs> you would like, do you throw with one hand but shoot with the other hand? Yeah, throw right-handed. Like, and that just happened naturally. What the hell? And yeah, shoot left, so. Isn't that so strange? It's weird. I mean, I do a lot of different things. Like left, what do you like eat foot. with? I eat with my right right, right, sh shoot left. I'm basically right-handed for the most part, mm. but I just shoot left and like kick left. And yeah, Base weird. baseball and golf is, is really weird. I like bat left, but I golf right. So that was- If I put a hockey stick in your hand right now, what would you feel comfortable? I don't even, I've never played hockey, so I don't know. Probably like this. <laughs> so left. This is left? Yeah. Left. Weird. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's weird. That's kind of fun. Can you shoot with your right hand right now? Um, a little bit. I have some competitions I do with some of the coaching staff here. Um, like after practices for fun, I'll shoot with my right hand and it's, I win sometimes. So <laughs> it's not great, but we have fun with it. Yeah, the left hand is obviously <laughs> better. Right. Uh, 24 games, regular season games with this Grizzly squad right now. What's been the, it doesn't have to be hard, but what's the biggest adjustment? Yeah. Um, I mean, the biggest adjustment is just like a, a brand new team. Like when I first mm -hmm. got here, um, just being a part of like a new system, new coaching staff, new teammates, um, just all the other staff. Um, it's it, it was a it was an adjustment for sure. You know, getting comfortable like comfortable with everybody, how they play. Um, but they they made it really easy, like the transition and stuff. And um, you know, once I started getting a little more comfortable, you know, everything kind of just started slowing down a little bit and. Uh, but yeah, it was it was definitely a, a, a big transition right away. But um, now it's you know it feels like I've been here for for a long time. So um, that's that's the best part about it. You know, just feeling right at home with it, with everybody. And um, it was good that I knew a couple familiar faces once I got here, like Tyus, and um, I knew I knew Jaron before before I got here. So um, there's a few guys, but. Uh, but yeah, just the, the new team, new field, that was the biggest adjustment. So you didn't play with Tyus at Duke, but you did play with him for Team USA back right. in 2014. How did you know Jaron? Um, AAU ball, okay. um, just growing up, you know, just you, you see guys just traveling, playing basketball, all that, so. One of the things that you have said um, in whatever media avails was that coach has been not hard on you, but like, shoot like shoot more shoot more shoot more shoot more we saw the 10 out of 11 threes that mm -hmm. one game um has that i don't know helped in the way of knowing that you have the green light no matter what yeah absolutely you know when you have like the confidence of a coach just telling you to shoot the ball and always be ready to shoot and same with my teammates um they're telling me as well as soon as i got here so um yeah it, it feels good definitely know definitely knowing that you know, they just, they want you to play. They want you to be yourself and just have fun with it. Um, so yeah, that, that was definitely a thing that I was um, really looking forward to once I, once I got here. Um, but it's also, you know, credit to everybody that I play with, you know, once we started figuring out how we, how we can play together and gel together, um, how I'm going to get shots. And, you know, the, the guys have been great really trying to find me and, and help me out with that. Uh, so 
it's it's been really good. Having known Tyus before, I know that you know playing at a FIBA event isn't like a season anywhere. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't get to play to together in college, but now that that second unit has kind of like come together and Tyus is like the quarterback of that unit, has it helped at all? Like, do you feel like you have chemistry? You can also say like, no, Kels, that was in 2014. Oh, no, no, yeah, abs absolutely. Um, I mean, just knowing Tyus from, from back then playing Team USA basketball to, you know, me taking visits to Duke when he was there, you know, mm -hmm. just hanging out with him a little bit. Um, yeah, you, you definitely, you know, feel a level of comfortability, I guess, when, when I first got here. So um, it definitely, you know, puts me at ease a little bit. And, and just knowing how he plays, you know, watching him over the years, you know, obviously he's, you know, one of the great point guards, you know, in, in the game right now, the way he, you know, can, you know, pass the ball and his IQ is so high, so. And literally never turn it over. Literally does, like, doesn't turn it <laughs> over. His assists are crazy high, so. Um, I knew, like, playing with him that I, I was gonna get shots and get open looks, so. Um, you always got to be ready, though. He'll, he'll sneak some in there that you're not really expecting. So it's, but it's, it's been fun to be a part of. Uh, I want to talk about you and Des too, mm -hmm. because that was like the big thing when you came to Memphis. It was like, ooh, now the Grizzlies have the number one and two three point percentage guys. Right. What did you think <laughs> you? And now I know that you're like sixth year. He's third year. Third year. Third year. Third, what yeah. have you guys learned? Because you can always learn. We always talk about like when Tyus was on this, he was saying like how much he's learned from Jaw, even though Jaw's right. younger, and then vice versa. Have you guys learned? things about each other because your game is very different however like you're both shooters right yeah no it's uh i mean when i first got here um you know just before practices and stuff we would shoot together um a left few times what'd you say left-handed i would be left yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 so uh no we we would shoot together and uh you know one of our assistant coaches would just you know when they were trying to get me acclimated to everything and the system and the offense and plays um you know, they, they run some similar like actions that I've kind of been a part of before with Des mm -hmm. um, and the way he gets his shots. So it was def definitely something that I learned, um, you know, how he gets gets open. Um, I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of film and still players today that play like shooters, like how do they get their shots off? Because, you know, if you're a shooter in this league, you, you don't really get a lot of space or time to, to get your shot off. You know, people try to take that away. Um, so with Des, um, the way he, you know, his pace and, uh, you know, the way he uses his physicality and stuff, you know, there, there were some things that I definitely learned as soon as I got here, um, just before practices, walking and, and talking and shooting. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's still something that I, I always try to talk to him about, um, just how he is able to get his shots off and, and get open looks. Who in the league, like, who are the top, I don't know, a few guys that you look at, you're like, damn, like, these guys can get space for their shots? Um... I mean, when I was in like high school, um, I, I loved watching like a JJ Reddick kind of guy. Obviously, he's not playing anymore, but loved watching. Great him. podcast, though. Yeah, great <laughs> podcast. Uh, so yeah, JJ was definitely one, and then I mean, like a like a Clay Thompson um, kind of thing. He, mm -hmm. I remember when I was in like college, he was somebody that I was watching a lot, like a lot of film on um, when I was at Duke and stuff like that. So you know, there's there's a few other guys, but. You know, like the Kyle Korver, his his old stuff. You know, it, it similar ways of getting his shots off. So, um, yeah, there's always always room for improvement, I think. But, for sure. But um, but yeah, I, I like I like trying to learn. Uh, I'm not gonna let you leave before we talk about that one game. It took you 17 games to break a franchise record <laughs> here with the Grizzlies, where you scored 30 points, going 10 for 11 from the three point line. And I know you've probably talked about that a little bit, but like. I hate this question because it turned into when I wake up, but like at what point did you know, like, I'm not missing tonight? Um, I mean... No, because there was one, Luke, I could yeah. picture it in my head. It was the in front of the visiting bench on the, like, wing, like the 45, mm -hmm. and you, like, you just didn't even, your feet weren't facing the basket, right. your shoulders weren't, <laughs> it was just like, this is going in. So, I mean, the game, I mean, the game started, I, I do remember, like, Feeling pretty good in warm-ups, mm -hmm. like when I was just shooting around, it. like it mm -hmm. just like legs felt good, like nothing was really bothering me or anything. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I mean, just as the game went on, um, I think I made made my first one. I might have missed. The, I think the second one was the one that I missed. It was like a late, like end of the shot clock, just a crazy step count. back one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like even even that shot, it felt good. Mm. Um, so every everything just just felt good and. <laughs> 
there's there are times like when I'm playing where it's like when I shoot I I, like, I really know that it's gonna go in um, I haven't I haven't got the um, I don't want to say it but yeah don't um, I have <laughs> no jinx, we're not jinxing anything no no um, but like the Steph Curry thing when he shoots and just turns, turns around, around like there's, there might have been some times where I, I could have done it but <laughs> during that game but uh you know it's it's always good I like I like to see it go in too um, but yeah I mean I just that was crazy all game I don't I don't know it just it felt good and yeah it, <laughs> they, they went in so they sure yeah, did just keep shooting it what'd you do with the game ball <laughs> Um, it's just sit, sit in my house right now. I'm definitely going to get uh, some writing or something on it, uh, the date and all that. So it's very cool. So yeah, I got it. You got I it. Got it. <laughs> Luke, we're so happy you're here. Can't Thank wait you. to watch you more. Wait, before you leave, mm -hmm. just really quick, because I just didn't find it online. Why jerseys number five and ten? Um, okay. So oh. <laughs> wait, what was it? Okay, okay. So growing up mm -hmm. family number like my dad's number uncle everybody was number 10 okay. so that was it was just like a family family thing um but then my freshman year of high school there was a senior that had number 10 so i couldn't Brutal. get it so i just cut it in half five was available so i just took five as a freshman in high school mm -hmm. um and switched after that and then at duke uh number 10 was retired so that I'm like, who's ten? Um, his name was Dick Groat. Oh, he's an older Wild, guy. Yeah, old okay. guy, older guy. Um, way back then. So I'm like, come on, you can't. <laughs> just that was a long time ago. No, but um, so yeah. Then I just switched back to five at Duke, and then um, I think ten might have been a, retired a couple places that I. So you try and get ten everywhere you go. I didn't know if that was like a you want ten always yeah. or you want five always. Right. So okay. I think I think in the when I was in Detroit, 10 was retired maybe. So I just stick, stuck with five. And then LA, I just stayed with five. Um, and then obviously I, I probably would have done five here, but my boy Vince has it. So it's all good. Switch We're back, back to, to 10. I, we'll throw back. So 10's great. It works. It works Family number. Yep. Thank you, Luke. Back. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Episode done. Done.